Hello, my name is Mar Pimentel. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'm going to show you one way that you can accelerate your CAM programming, and that is by predefining your fees and speeds. So there's actually three basic ways to define the fees and speeds in your operations. Now, this could be for milling, this could be for turning. Uh, in this video, we're just going to focus on the milling side of things, and we're just going to do these pockets you see on screen. So very simply, every one of these two and a half, 3D, five axis operations that you select, you have the option of in the operation manager to go to your feed and speed section. And you see that you can define your fees and speeds in three different ways. And I have that represented here on this part, those three pockets. This first one is defining the fees and speeds by the library. So what that's actually doing is it's taking a look at the material that you've defined. So you can see it listed here, but you actually define it when you define your stock. So let's just get out of here. We'll go into our stock here. And the shape of the stock is what you're actually here to define, but a lot of people don't see that up here. You can actually give a definition of the material that this part is made out of. Now, sometimes this is not necessary for what you're doing, but when it comes to feeds and speeds, this can actually help you because this ties in to a definition of the material in your TechDB. So let's take a look at that real quick here. So for the library feeds and speeds, I can go to the feed and speed section. I can go to the feed and speed editor. And you can see that all the materials are listed there. So since we were working with 6061T6, I'll click on that. And then I can go to the Feeds and Speeds section. Okay, so working, we are doing a roughing operation. I had defined this machine as being medium duty. We were using a carbide end mill. And the end mill itself is 3 quarter inch. So in this case, if I'm doing about a 3 8 cut, we should be seeing a surface footage of 722. If we go back into that operation, that's what pops up right there. And you can see it's grayed out in the operation manager. And that's because it's tied into that material definition. So the feeds and speeds for this operation come from the material definition. The second way to define your feeds and speeds in an operation is by the operation itself. So as soon as you click on operation, it actually opens up these windows here for input. So this is actually plugging in the numbers here and here. Um, so this is directly tied into the operation. This exists inside of this CAM part file, but this is something that you could save to your strategies as well. So if you know that in this operation, in the strategy that you're defining here, if you want to use these feeds and speeds for whatever reason, you can define them here. And this becomes part of the operation rather than tied into something in your technology database. The third way is defined by the tool. So if we take a look at this and we say defined by tool, it's linked to that tool definition. And you can see that we have different fees and speeds here as well. And that ties into the tool definition in your TechDB. So let's take a look at that real quick. We'll go to the milling tool section. Here's my flat end mill. And we'll jump down to tool 76, which is the one being used here. So you can see that as part of the tool definition, not only do you give it the dimensions of the tool, but you can also go down to the cutting parameters. So every time this tool is used, you can see that it loads these fees and speeds. So this is another way to define the fees and speeds, one of three ways to define the fees and speeds. Now these are for the basic uses of the tool, basic uses of the operations within the software. There's actually a fourth way, it's not basic, but it's using the volume mill application inside of uh, SolidWorks Cam and CamWorks. So that real briefly would be if you switch this to operation. So you're giving the operation the control over those fees and speeds rather than tying it into the material or tying it into the tool definition. And now when you're using volume mill, you're using things like the volume mill expert, to define fees and speeds based off of a set of parameters. This would require its own video, so this is not something that I would consider to be the basics of fees and speed control. But here you can see that with your material definition, with your tool definition, you can provide fees and speeds for every use of that tool or every application on that material. If you're looking for a very specific case-by-case uh, -case control of those fees and speeds, you can use the operation control, where you plug in the fees and speeds in each operation for that one part you're working on, whatever material it is, whatever tool you're using. If you like what you've seen here and you'd like to learn more ways to accelerate your programming, 
click on the link below in the description to attend the webinar. Thanks for watching. <music>